Hi, my name is Casey DeBaum. I'm with the Duke Tape Program. I'm 13 years old. I'm going to 8th grade and I'm from Conway, Arkansas. This summer, I had the opportunity to take an e-studies course on nanotechnology. This course has required me to do a final project that I will present to you right now. In 1998, about 50 students attended a 10-week course on nanotechnology and exploratory engineering. This course was taught by Eric Drexler at Stanford University during the spring quarter. Eric Drexler is a researcher whose work focuses on advanced nanotechnologies. His work has been the basis for numerous journal articles and books including Engines of Creation, The Coming Era of Nanotechnology, and Nanosystems, Molecular Machinery, Manufacturing, and Computation. Eric Drexler has received a PhD from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Molecular Nanotechnology. He recently served as Chief Technical Consultant to the Technology Roadmap for Productive Nanosystems. Now, let me take you on a journey a little bit farther into the heart of nanotechnology. In 1981, the first official microscope that could be used to view matter on this nanoscale was invented. This microscope was called the STM, or Scanning Tunneling Microscope. The STM was a powerful technique for viewing surfaces at the atomic level. The STM probes density of states of material using tunneling current. For the STM, good resolution is 0.1 nanometers lateral resolution and 0.01 nanometers depth resolution. One advantage of the STM is that it, it can not only be used in high vacuum, but also in air and, uh, and various other liquid and gas ambients. Another advantage is that it can be used at temperatures rating from near zero Kelvin to a few hundred degrees Celsius. Now we'll talk about a microscope that was invented in 1986. This microscope was called the AFM, or Atomic Force Microscope. The AFM is a very high resolution type of scanning probe microscope. The AFM has shown demonstrated resolutions within fractions of a nanometer. That is a thousand times better than the optical diffraction limit. The AFM is one of the foremost tools for imaging, manipulating, and measuring at the nanoscale today. Now we're going to talk about carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes were discovered in 1991 by Sumio Ijima. These nanotubes are allotropes with a nanostructure that can have a length to diameter ratio greater than one million. They exhibit extraordinary strength and electrical properties and are efficient conductors of heat. Because of this, they are useful in many applications in nanotechnology. For example, they can be used in electronics, optics, and other fields of material science. The first molecular nanotechnology company was founded in 1997 by James R. Von Ehr II. This company was called Zyvex. Zyvex vision is to help their customers view the world at a different scale and to unlock new technologies of the future. Did you know that the first nanomedicine book wasn't published until 1999? It's true. The first nanomedicine book was called Nanomedicine Volume 1 Basic Capabilities by Robert A. Friedis. This book was used to lay the foundation for nanomedicine. At Rice University, they have developed something called a flesh folder. The flesh welder will allow them to reseal a cut like it was never even there. They are able to test this by putting down two pieces of chicken, then laying down greenish liquid that contains gold-coated nanoshells, then using an infrared laser to trace along the seam, fusing the two pieces of chicken together. This will solve many problems that occur when surgeons try to restitch arteries from a heart or kidney transplant. Neuroelectronic interfaces are a visionary goal that deal with the construction of nanovices that will allow computers to be joined and linked to the nervous system. This idea requires the building of a molecular structure that will permit control and detection of nerve impulses by an external computer. If we could connect the nervous system to computers through neuroelectronic interfaces, all the problems that come with disease and injury could be overcome. Nanotechnology seems to have a lot in store for us in the future. We could have a cure for cancer in a matter of years. Even though I've just pressed the surface on nanotechnology, I hope I gave you enough information for you to want to pursue the subject a little bit farther. This is Casey Dubois, and thank you for watching.